all of a sudden, I recall a bunch of people standing around and I remember in my spirit and then I heard something say loud and clear. I said, we're getting ready to be judged for everything that we've done. Good morning, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, Brother Ramsey. Today is, I believe it is January the 15th. I had another intense vision or someone called dream in the middle of, of tonight or, or this morning around 5 a.m. And I want to share this dream with the body of Christ or Messiah or and more importantly, I want to share this dream with those who may not know Yahshua, the one they call Jesus, those who may be uh, a little skeptical about that belief, that doctrine. Right. I want to explain to you very carefully what took place and what I saw. Now, we know in the last days, the Lord said he's going to pull out his spirit on his servants and his handmaidens and they shall dream dreams and see visions and they will prophesy. I'm telling you right now, please, uh, with all humility, brothers and sisters, please listen to this message because I want you to understand that at the end of the day, we can have all of this knowledge and wisdom and understanding of the scriptures, the Torah and all of these wonderful things. But at the end of the day is my brothers and sisters that if we are not walking in love, if we're not doing it in love, then there is a huge problem. The Most High showed me the vision, a vision of the judgment. I seen a lot of things and I want to be able to disclose this information to you all. So I pray that you are, uh, that you throw in your thinking caps, that if you decide to take notes or whatever the case may be, then so be it. But more importantly, I want you to just really consider everything that's getting ready to be spoken and just evaluate your life, test yourselves to make sure that you are actually in the faith. And with that being said, I'm going to start the voice recording and I'm going to try to attach as many uh, clips to it as possible to give a better illustration of what actually took place. Be blessed. Okay, brothers and sisters, I have to explain something to you very carefully. I hope you all are listening. This really happened and I want you all to really sit back and listen to what took place at 5 a.m. in the morning on January the 15th, 2023. This is how the vision and the dream opened up unto me. So all of a sudden, I recall a bunch of people standing around and I remember in my spirit and then I heard something say loud and clear. I said, we're getting ready to be judged for everything that we've done. We're getting ready to be judged for everything that we've done. And then out of nowhere, it just switched, everything switched. And then we kind of started like, everybody started like moving towards like this, this open room, like this waiting room of some sort. It was like a big room, like a big chamber. I don't know the, the width and the length, but it was a big chamber, a big room. Uh, after that took place, I remember after everybody entered inside of the room, this chamber, this waiting room, out of nowhere, I recall a line just automatically was formed. A long line was formed. And there were bunches of people. There were a lot of people. And we were all standing in this line. Uh, and in my spirit, I knew 100% that we were standing in line because we were getting ready to be judged. This was judgment day. This was the second death, as the scriptures talk about. This was the day that everybody had to be judged for what they did in their body, whether it was good or bad. And I knew that. I knew that 100%. Okay. After that took place, I remember the Lord just allowed me to, for some reason, he allowed me to see in the distance what was at the front of the line. And at this front of the line, I recall that it was a big, massive uh, line, but it had two different paths. And on my left side, what would be God's right side, it was eternal damnation. It was the lake of fire. 
it was the second death. And on my right side, which would be God's left side, there I knew in my spirit, there was eternal life. And I knew it was between one of these paths, uh, God was going to determine your fate. I knew it. I felt it. And I felt the, I f oh my goodness. Mm, I'll get there in a moment. Besides that, I recall there was a throne. There was a throne, man. There was a throne in the distance. I knew that the Most High or whoever was in his position of authority of judgment, he sat up in this big throne and he was like looking down on everybody and everything. And I knew nobody could escape this judgment. No one could escape this judgment. Everybody had to, everything was going to be made known. Everything you did in your life, whether it was good or evil, every secret thing, he knew it. So after that took place, I remember uh, for some strange reason, the Lord like allowed me to like see these souls that was at the front of the line. And I remember these souls that was at the front of the line for some reason, some of the souls were were black, not like color black or skin brown or, or purple black, but their soul, their being, their the entity itself was radiating darkness, like like tar, like the color, like they, their aura was like super black. Their being was black. And then I seen these other beings, these other souls, and they had like half of their bodies was like full of light and the other half was full of darkness. And then I seen these other souls where their entire soul was full of light. And then the scripture came back to my mind where Jesus or Yahshua said, he said that I be single, your body, your soul is full of light, the glory of God, the spirit, the anointing. And then he said that if your eye be evil, Right. He said the body is full of darkness. Then he said, how great is that darkness? So it's like he was revealing that revelation to me and helping me understand that on the judgment day, people's their bodies, their 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 their, their souls, their their, their their existence, their everything about them. They're going to we're going to be shown who these people truly are from within the body and without. And it was so scary. And then after that happened, I remember this very vividly, very vividly. I recall all of a sudden I was just standing at the front of the line. And I knew I was getting judged. Like I felt like I was getting judged. And I'm trying to tell you the fear of God is indescribable. You do not understand the fear of God until you stand before his presence. When you stand before his presence and you realize that he has control over your fate, he has control over your destiny, he has control over what's getting ready to happen to you. There is words cannot describe how you feel. There was a terrifying feeling that was going through my body my soul, my being, but he didn't allow me to feel the entire feeling. I felt like a fraction of it, but the fraction of it was hard to bear. It was hard to bear. And I stood right there and I felt the fear of the Lord uh, take hold of my, my soul, man. Oh, man. And then as, as the fear of the Lord began to take hold of me, I looked at these paths. I, I knew in my spirit that one was going to lead to uh, these pathways, one was going to lead to eternal damnation. The other one was going to lead to eternal life. I just knew it in my spirit. It was a strong knowing. And then out of nowhere, I was like, oh, my goodness. And then I knew that the book of life was getting ready to be opened. My name was going to be searched out, whether it was in, I felt it in my spirit. I just knew the book of life is opening. It's opening now. Oh, my goodness. Is my name in there? I felt it. It was so, it was an overwhelming feeling. And I was like, oh, my goodness. And that was the, it was like beyond what you can imagine. Your heart dropped. Everything in your being is like, Lord, please, I hope my name is in there. And I remember loud and clear. He said, he said, my son. Oh, Lord, when he said my son, it made me, it, it, the fear kind of, a little bit of the fear left because I was like, oh, he, he's acknowledging me as his son, which is a blessing. But he didn't allow me to hear, uh, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I didn't hear those words. 
But I do remember after he said my son, he began to speak to me, but he did not permit me to remember what he said to me. But I knew he was going over my life. He was going over the things in my life. And then all of a sudden, like as he was speaking a big, like a, uh, like a image, like, you know, it just popped up before my eyes. And I remember that uh, uh, God was showing me. He didn't show me exactly something that took place in my life, but he was giving me an example of what I was seeing and, 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 and his criteria and, and, and his standard. And this is what he showed me. He showed me that I was playing basketball with a guy who I didn't even know. And I was like, who is this dude? You know, and it's like, as the Lord was speaking, like it manifested. And he showed me like this image and like this video played out before my eyes. And it's like this guy in front of me was playing basketball. But at the same time, it's like the Lord was showing me whether or not I was going to love this dude I was playing basketball with or not. It was so weird. And I like I knew he just scored on me or he just did something that was just like, like, whoa, you know, like a whoa moment. And then like I knew in my heart I had a decision to be prideful, to be arrogant, to be like, man, you know what? To be competitive in an evil way. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? Like with no love in my heart. But for some reason, I was just like, good job, man. That was a nice shot. And it's like the Lord was revealing the secrets of man. He was revealing God, the secrets of people's hearts and who they are as an individual, their true character behind closed doors. He sees all of it. He sees all of it. And I'm trying to tell you right after that took place, I knew in my spirit, it's like I had an overwhelming knowing as much as you did unto them, you did unto me. See, people think that Lord, the Lord is just talking about believers or people in the faith. He's talking about everybody. He's talking about he, every human. Because remember, everybody's created in God's image, in the most highest image. So which, how you treat people, how you treat people is going to be determined your true character. On, on, it's, going to be, it's going to show who you truly are on Judgment Day. Not just believers. But those who are not in the faith, because remember, we're called to be a, a light to those who are in darkness. So he's going to judge people on how they treated people who were lost. Right. He's going to judge your he's going to judge every secret thing. And that's what I felt, whether or not I can love people or not, whether or not what was truly inside of my heart, what was truly inside of me as a as an individual, as a being. And then right after that happened, I remember out of nowhere it just it just changed it shifted boom and then out of nowhere i was just standing right there and then i seen my brother and then i seen another guy who i work with at my job i seen him standing beside my brother and he kind of like walked out of the out of the uh the picture kind of thing and my brother was standing right there. And out of nowhere my my wife she comes up out of nowhere but at the time i knew it wasn't my wife but it was my wife but it was the way she greeted me she she acknowledged me as like a, a sister and a brother would acknowledge you know, she didn't, she didn't, we didn't walk up and start hugging and kissing and stuff like that. It was just like a, hey, how you doing, sister? Oh, hey, how you doing, brother? And she walked up and acknowledged me. She said, oh, I see that the Lord has redeemed you. He has, and then, oh, sa she, oh, she said, saved you. And then she had like this aura around her and she had her hair down. And then she said, I can tell because this, this, this light, this aura is around your soul. And I looked down, it was like, it was weird. It was like this little light that was coming from off my soul. And then I was like, yeah, the Lord, he didn't give us our glorified bodies yet. He's getting ready to do that, but he didn't give it to us yet. Um, and then right after that happened, my brother walked up to me and I knew he was next in line to be judged. His judgment was getting ready to happen. But it's like God stopped everything. And then it's just weird how he did it, the most high. And then like out of nowhere, I recall my brother walking up to me and he shook my hand. He shook my hand and he looked at me and he said, congratulations, you made it. He said, congratulations. Then he walked up to my uh, my wife, which is Sister Amber. She he walked up to him and said, congratulations. You, you made it. You made it. Congratulations. And then he like leaned back and leaned back up on something. He had like these punk rockish clothes on, you know, because he was in, my brother was into like punk rockish stuff growing up. You know, that the old man or whatever you want to call it, you know, that, that nightlife, you know. So he was like leaning back up on the thing. And then like he kind of put his head down like smirked, like a little smile on his face. He was just like, you know, man, he's like, you know, I've done some bad things in my life, but you know, God, he understands, you know, he, he knows like, like that kind of Christian mindset where those that's in that religion, they say, you know, God knows my heart, you know, he, he, he knows I'm a good person. And on judgment day, 
God knows everything. He knows the wickedness that you do. He knows every sin that you have broken. And he knows that if you have not been covered by the blood and you're not obeying and striving to enter into the kingdom of God, repenting daily of your sins, turning from anything that's opposing to God's word, he knows whether or not you are his or you belong to the devil. And that's exactly the truth. And the people got a problem with that. But I knew in my spirit, my brother was getting ready to be judged. And he smirked and he's like, I, I should be fine. You know, I've done a few bad things but you know, I'll be all right, he'll let me in, you know? But then he looked down, I knew he had this sense of like, uh, he didn't have assurance, you know? He didn't, he didn't know for, he didn't have any confidence. He was just like a little like perplexed, like a little confused, like, man, I don't know really, I don't know. You know, the scripture says mercy rejoiceth, you know, uh, at the judgment. Mercy makes you uh, confident, right? But you know, anyway, after that happened, out of nowhere, the Lord just pulled me and uh, Sister Amber, my wife, out of that place and put us in a, like a room, a chamber full of a bunch of other people that I knew in my spirit. They were already saved. They were redeemed. They had already been they had already been judged. And I knew that 100 percent, 100 percent. They was already judged. And then all of a sudden, the Lord just pulled up this big old television screen like this thing was huge, man. And everybody was like in front of it, watching it. And then out of nowhere, like I just seen like. Uh, on the television screen, it was like this big old enclosure. And then like this lava began to like fill it up like a pool. You know what a pool looks like. Like the water, it starts rising and rising and rising and rising. You know, and then lava just started coming in. It started filling up this enclosure. And I just knew in my spirit, oh my goodness, this is the lake of fire. This is the lake of fire. This is God's judgment. This is his wrath. This is the second death. I knew it in my spirit. Nobody had to tell you anything. You just knew it. And then right after that happened, I begin to go to a place where, hold on, if we're on here and my brother's getting ready, but why is the Lord filling this lake of fire up? What's going on? And as the lake of fire began to fill up and fill up and fill up, and then I, and we all seen it, and the lake of fire had like orange and yellow in it, you know, like the fire we see on earth. But for some reason, it was like boiling, bubbling, looked like waves of fire. You know, like how you see like in a storm, you know, waves going all crazy, rocking back and forth, you know, when it's, you know, when the when different category uh, storms that we may get hit with, like hurricanes, stuff. That's how it looked. The, the fire was like bubbling and roaring around, looked like water, but it was like lava, lava, and fire and magma. I hope that makes sense. Um, and then, and, but it had like a white glow about it. It had like a, you see all the reddish and orange, but it had like a white glow at the same time. It was very strange and abnormal uh, you know, in regards to what is considered normal in our reality. So, after that took place, I began to go to a place where I began to be terrified and troubled in my spirit for my brother. And I started to back away from the monitor like, no, Lord, no. And I started to bow down. I began to weep and I began to cry. And I was like, Lord, no, don't throw my brother in there. And I knew as I began to be troubled in my spirit, my wife was in my peripheral. And I seen that she started to, or sister at the time, I felt my spirit, she was like more of my sister than my wife. And I, I felt my spirit, she knew that I was beginning to be troubled because she was starting to pick up what was getting ready to happen. And I knew in my spirit that the Lord was getting ready to throw somebody in this burning fire. And I was like, Lord, please don't throw my brother in there, don't do it. And I, I, I began to bow down and I began to just cry and weep. And then I looked up and I remember it was this tall guy, it was real weird. It was like out of everybody that was like looking at this monitor, he kind of just like, uh, he, he somehow he was like, he just, he, I was able to spot this guy out out of everybody that was standing watching this monitor. And he was like a little bit darker than me. And then I, and I knew it was the Lord. It was so strange. I looked at him. I was like, Lord, please don't throw him in there. And then he looked at me. He didn't say anything. He looked at me with like this serious look, but at the same time, like a, a, a authoritative look. He looked at me and then he turned back around and started looking at the monitor. Oh, Lord, and I began to weep and I began to cry. And then the Lord just, boom, he just woke me up. Oh, where's the faithful few that are left, man? I'm searching just to find them. Are you sure you can handle that? Are you sure you can handle that? Are you sure you can handle it? The dreams that I see in the night And I saw a great white throne 
and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Then I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire.